Hey there, it's Reverend James Fother, and I'm live sharing with you this meditation, this thinking around hope that would be helpful to us in times that are so, so challenging. We turn to the writer of Hebrews in the New Testament, the 10th chapter and the 23rd verse, where it reads this way, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's own holy word. Amen. Today, we turn to the work of spiritual literacy, reading the sacred in everyday life. We're turning to one of the great sources that I just love so much today. And I pray it will be a blessing to you as we move through this reading on hope. A teacher does her best and hopes Her enthusiasm for learning has lit a fire inside her students for reading. A woman working in a hospice hopes that the people in her care will have finally finished deaths. A human rights activist in prison hopes that he will be freed soon to resume his work. Like us, these individuals are animated by hope which Czechoslovakian playwright and politician Vaclav Havel maintains is a, quote, dimension of the spirit. It is not outside us, but within us, unquote. The potent and positive human faculty must be distinguished from its dangerous sister expectation, which steals us from the present and pushes us down the path of disappointment when things don't go our way. Hope, in contrast, is patient. It is willing to stay with us in the here and now, and it assures us the future is open. One of my favorite Protestant ministers Reverend Dr. William Sloan Coffin stated that, quote, hope arouses as nothing else can arouse a passion for the possible, unquote. Do you have that today? Do you have a passion for the possible in your life working right now on you? There's a forward thrust to bold projects and schemes begun with great commitment, ardor, and idealism. Hope is the fuel which keeps them going and growing. What oxygen is to the lungs, Swiss theologian Emil Brunner writes, such is hope to the meaning of life. No wonder Martin Luther, the leader of the Protestant Reformation, urges us to realize everything that is done in the world is done by hope. We get up, we give it our finest effort, and then we hope for the best. In Dakota, the writer Kathleen Norris takes a subject that's really hard to engender hope from. She takes the subject of gossip and she turns it around and makes it for us a consideration of hope. As I get ready to close today, to encourage you to have hope unswervingly like the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews says, be inspired by Kathleen Norris, the writer today who wrote this on sharing gossip. We are interrelated in a small town, whether or not we're related by blood. We know without thinking about about, uh, who owns what car, inhabitants of a small town, 
as small as a monastery, learn to recognize each other's footsteps in the hall. Story is a safety valve for people who live as intimately as that. And I would argue that gossip done well can be a holy thing. It can strengthen communal bonds. Imagine that gossip can strengthen communal bonds, she writes. Like the desert tales that monks have used for centuries as a basis for theology and way of life, the tales of small town gossip are often morally instructive, illustrating the ways ordinary people survive the worst that happens to them. Or, conversely, the ways in which self-pity, anger, and despair can overwhelm and destroy them. Gossip is theology translated into experience. In it, we hear great stories of conversion, like the drunk who turns his or her life around, as well as stories of failure. We can see that pride really does go before a fall and that hope is essential. We watch closely those who retire or who lose a spouse lest they lose interest in living. When we gossip, we are also praying not only for them, but for ourselves. What a hopeful statement to end on in Dakota for the writer Kathleen Norris. When we gossip, she wrote, we are also praying not only for them, but for ourselves. Whatever it is that's keeping you from hoping in these days, please, 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 beloved, commit it to prayer and continue committing those things to prayer which keep you from hoping hope is essential it's as essential in our lives as breathing and we as faithful people have to find our way back to hope and so today it is my prayer for you that you will find your way back to hope in 2022, that your hope will be strengthened by everything God's already done in your life, knowing that God is going to work on you some more in this very year, year of our Lord Jesus. 2022. Yes, God's got more for you. Yes, you can surely hope in the midst of despair. Yes, you can commit to prayer. All the things that would keep you from otherwise being hopeful again. Let's hold the Crawford Sager families in prayer. Let's hold each one in prayer, but especially our dear elder Marva Crawford, who lost a grandson, got news of that and just called about it earlier today, this second Wednesday, uh, this, uh, First Wednesday, I'm sorry, first first Wednesday of the new year, the fifth day of the month of January 2022. May God bless you as this podcast reaches you. And may you know God's protection and safety for you and yours in these difficult times. Let's hold everyone in Boulder County, those responding to the tragedies of devastation, property loss, 
folks going one day from having a home to seeing their homes reduced to ashes the very next day for the terrible Marshall Fire. Let us continue to lift our prayers for those who were affected and those who are responding. And let us continue to lift our prayers as this COVID-19 Omicron variant continues its devastation in our country and in our world so that we can hope again. Let's commit everything to prayer that's keeping us, holding us back from hoping again. This has been Reverend James Fother, pastor of the United Church of Montbello. Thanks for tuning in for this podcast today on the subject of hope and Hebrews 10.23, where it reads, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. May that same faithful God keep you until we connect again. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen.